Hi everyone, welcome back to the Vision Refocus channel where we discuss all things eye health and vision related. I'm Dr. Kevin Cornwell and today I wanted to go over some of the main tests and procedures that eye doctors perform for diagnosing and managing glaucoma. Whether you're a glaucoma suspect or have been treated for glaucoma for many years, these tests can sometimes be overwhelming and confusing. I'll provide a bit more clarification on how and why each test is done, as well as the typical frequency in which each one is performed. Let's jump right in. So of all the tests we do for glaucoma, the visual field is by far the least favorite with patients. This is the test where you look into a large machine and tiny lights will begin to flash throughout your central and peripheral vision. Patients are instructed to click a button each time they see a light and at the end of the test their visual field is mapped out. And because glaucoma causes damage to the optic nerve, this test is super important in determining whether or not you have any corresponding vision loss. Or if you're being treated for glaucoma, this test can also help doctors know whether or not your glaucoma is staying stable or progressing. Patterns of peripheral vision loss that we typically see with glaucoma include nasal steps, scotomas, or paracentral defects. Unless central vision is affected, most patients with glaucoma will be completely asymptomatic for vision changes until about 50% of their peripheral vision is gone. And in glaucoma, once it goes, it doesn't come back which is why it's super important for glaucoma to be caught and treated early. And because the visual field can be a difficult test to perform, don't be surprised if your eye doctor has you repeat this test multiple times over different visits to ensure accuracy. It doesn't mean you did anything wrong. The test is usually performed as a baseline, and then depending on the results and reliability, it's usually repeated every three to six months thereafter. Another important test we do for glaucoma is called optical coherence tomography, or OCT for short. This is a high definition scan of the optic nerve. You can think of it like an ultrasound, except light instead of sound is used to capture the image. So to capture an OCT image, the doctor or their technician will help place the patient's chin and forehead into a camera-like device. You'll be instructed to focus on a target while a line scans across your vision, which may then be followed by a bright camera flash. This objective test is often performed several times per year and allows your eye doctor to take precise measurements of each section of the optic nerve. And in glaucoma, the OCT can often show changes to the optic nerve thickness sooner than peripheral vision loss is detected. So another glaucoma test that's sure to be done at every one of your visits is an eye pressure check. This is because glaucoma is typically caused by elevated eye pressure and all forms of glaucoma treatment are geared towards reducing eye pressure. I know a lot of you remember that dreaded air puff test that your doctor or their technician will do every time you see them to assess eye pressure. However, the most accurate way to assess intraocular pressure is by a technique called Goldman tonometry. For this test, the doctor will instill a yellow anesthetic eye drop and will position you at the microscope. A blue probe is then brought towards your eye and gently touches the tear film to obtain the reading. If for whatever reason you feel uncomfortable or like you're straining or holding your breath when having your eye pressure checked, let your eye doctor know as this can cause artificially high readings. You can ask to be repositioned in the exam chair or whether or not there are any handheld techniques available. This will allow you to sit back in a more comfortable position. Another common test we do for glaucoma is called pachymetry, which measures the thickness of the cornea, which is the clear front surface of the eye. Many of our techniques to measure eye pressure are influenced by how thick or thin the cornea is, therefore this measurement is important to know. Thicker corneas can cause artificially higher eye pressure readings, while thinner corneas can cause artificially lower eye pressure readings. Therefore it's important for your doctor to know this measurement and adjust their eye pressure readings accordingly. This test is typically performed with a small pen-like device. The doctor will instill a drop of anesthetic and then gently touch the device to the front surface of your eye. Offices that have that OCT device we just talked about can also capture pachymetry readings by simply taking an image of the cornea as well. This procedure is typically only performed once as our corneal thickness tends to remain stable over time. And the last test we'll look at is called gonioscopy. This procedure allows the doctor to assess the drainage structures inside the eye and better classify which type of glaucoma a patient has. The drainage structures are at the front of the eye where the white part meets the colored part and how open or closed this drain is will influence your eye pressure. Sometimes things like cataracts, diabetes, or trauma can alter these drainage structures. 
Other times, people may just be born with a narrow angle and are more susceptible to higher eye pressure. The gonioscopy procedure is typically performed once a year and is done so with the patient seated at the exam chair in the slit lamp. Your doctor will place one drop of anesthetic in your eye and then use a special contact lens to assess the interior chamber angle. So there you have it. I hope you found this video useful in learning more about the different glaucoma tests we typically perform on patients. And while sometimes these can be annoying or time consuming, remember that these tests are relatively non-invasive and have no harmful side effects. It's also important to keep in mind that glaucoma is a marathon and not a sprint, as we're comparing these results over months and years at a time and altering our treatments accordingly. Most glaucomas tend to progress slowly. For more eye health and vision related videos, feel free to check out the other content on our channel and subscribe. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.